Hello everybody! Welcome to another Nicaragua video! Today I'm going to be showing you all the different plants that I've come across woo, that grow really well here in Nicaragua. When I first came to Nicaragua, I tried to plant like a westerner. Psh, boring, lame, everything would die, it sucked. But now I understand how to plant like a tropical person! And Nicaragua's the tropics! This is what it should look like when you garden. There should just be plants everywhere! And there's nothing stopping you aside from your limited Western beliefs. So this video is going to show you the kinds of plants that grow really, really well here in Nicaragua. So here we have a bunch of different things, and I don't know the names for all of them. So I'm not going to tell you all the plants that are growing. I'm going to focus on ones that seem to grow really well. Because when, when you first start, you need to kind of work with the plants that grow well because it's going to motivate you. If you just try and plant things that die, it's really depressing and you might give up and stop planting things. But planting things and surrounding yourself with plants is a really great way to take care of yourself and it really helps your house feel better and it improves your mental health. So it's a really, really good habit. So I want to make sure that you can plant things that are going to thrive. And the best way to do that is to know what works really well here in the tropics, right? We'll start with this plant. Unfortunately, I don't know the names of them. Kind of like a, a succulent. You can see that the leaves are a little bit thick. They're not that thin, but they're not like a, a super thick plant. And this plant is a really, really good pollinating plant. Uh, it makes a lot of pollen and bees love it. But the reason I'm telling you about it is because it's really, really, really easy to grow. Like all you have to do is find one of these out in the wild somewhere and then cut it. So you take a bit and then you just put it in some dirt and then boom, look at that. Those ones are even flowering still. These are all just cuttings that were put in dirt. And as long as they have good sunlight, Right? You don't want too much, but as long as they have strong sunlight, this plant grows really, really, really well. And it's got a lot of flowers, so it's fun to grow. There's also other colors. You can see here, this one's yellow. As far as I know, it's the same plant. Just different colors. And another plant that's really easy to grow in Nicaragua are chilies. You can see this is actually a practice permaculture chili. It's one chili plant growing in a box that has lots and lots of different plants in it, right? Lots of different kinds of chilies. This is just like a common chili. This is a pretty big chili plant actually, believe it or not, it goes all the way up here. But chilies grow quite well. You, you do have to manage the bugs. Um, and really the easiest way to manage the bugs is just by spraying them with water because you can sort of wash them away. And in nature, what happens is the plants grow and the bugs basically destroy them. So nature has a process of cleaning the bugs off of the plants and that's through rain and heavy rains. So bugs get really bad in the dry season when there's no rain to sort of wash the bug eggs away. And this, again, sorry, I don't know the names of any of these, but this is another really, really common Nicaraguan plant. You can see that is actually a tamaga, which is a kind of stingless bee. It's one of my favorites. Very, very cute. And it's one of the most common sort of landscaping plants you'll see here. They grow these little flowers, and they make a flower, and it lasts like a day or so, and then they make lots of them. So you can see these are all going to be flowers later. And these plants can actually get quite big. This one's pretty bushy. Sometimes they just sort of grow up in a stalk. But normally in Nicaragua, like if you see a business, they'll have a bunch of these plants like in the front and basically nothing else. <laughs> and here we have basil. This may look different than basil you're used to, but this is albahaca or like local basil, and it grows like a weed. It grows really, really, really well here in Nicaragua, and it doesn't need that great soil, but it does need a decent amount of sun. And they actually get their perennials, so they last for many, many, many years, and they'll get really, really bushy if you give them time and they have enough sun. And then when it rains a lot, 
they'll sort of suffer in the rain, especially if they can't dry out. This one is in a really good spot. It gets a lot of sunlight and it's able to um, stay dry. And when it rains, it's open sky. So there's not like a roof pouring extra water. It's just regular rain. So it doesn't get too wet. Whereas if you have a bunch of them and they're crowded, uh, the water will actually hurt them and it can sometimes even kill the plant. But it tastes pretty good. It's, the taste isn't as clean tasting as Italian basil, but Italian basil is a pain in the ass to grow because the bugs love it and it's really fragile. So this is awesome. I make pesto out of it and it tastes great. So it's a, it's a cool plant. It's actually one of the first plants I started to grow. It's a really good pioneer plant. You can grow a lot of them and they'll grow in bad soil. So it's great if you're having problems with things like the, the little worms in the soil, um, that kind of thing. It's a big problem in the tropics. You can see there's the, the tamaga. <laughs> and here we have sunflowers. Sunflowers are easy to grow. The sunflowers are kind of easy to grow anywhere there's sun. They don't really need much from the ground. Um, sometimes they have issue with white fly and that kind of thing, but these are just sunflowers. I've grown them. I usually grow them. They don't live that long, to be honest. They just grow, then they make a sunflower, and then they last a couple weeks, and then they die. But I've been trying to grow them to get the seeds because we have birds, and we feed them sunflower seeds. So I may as well try and get actual seeds out of them. So this is an experiment where I basically recreated the scenario that sunflower grows naturally in, which is in, like, if you've ever seen wild sunflowers, they're never in, like, a field and they're a big ass sunflower with a big, big flower on the top. That's the farming. That's not na nature. In nature, sunflowers make bushes. They make these really messy areas with loads of plants and they sort of fall over each other and there's a bunch of little sunflowers. So I'm trying to re sort of reproduce that scenario by planting them here and then planting more and more because the way the sunflower grows. It sort of needs other sunflowers around it. Otherwise, when they get heavy, they fall over. And once a plant falls over, it, it struggles to get all the water it needs up into it. So plants that have fallen over and get stuck that way tend to suffer. So it's really important to keep them able to be straight. And sunflowers naturally will keep each other straight as long as they're around other sunflowers. So you can sort of just grow a bunch of them in the same area and then they'll grow up and it looks really cool. And the next thing that's really great to have in Nicaragua isn't so much a plant, it's this beautiful creature right over here. Nicaragua was made for these beautiful hens. Right, Rojo? Someone is uh, putting up a fuss, as you can see. This is Maggie. She's complaining because the other two chickens escaped out of this hole, but Maggie is stuck inside. I don't know why, she always stays inside and she gets kind of jealous, right? But chickens are really awesome. Hey, it's okay, calm down, relax. Chickens are really awesome in Nicaragua because you don't have a winter to deal with and the only thing you really have to worry about is keeping them dry and predators. But you can see if I come over here, boop, this is why chickens are awesome. And if you're in Nicaragua, really, you should have chickens. They're great. And here we have my favorite plant. Well, one of my favorite plants. This is, I th it's called Malinche, or I think this is actually Malinche Jardin, which is like garden Malinche. This is a tree that can get incredibly big, like really big, but that's the regular version. So these are like garden versions. So they're sort of dwarf Malinches. They're like little. But this is a really cool plant. Um, it grows in this sort of arrays, right? So it makes lots and lots and lots of beautiful green leaves. And what's so cool about it is it barely needs anything to grow in. You can just use regular dirt. Um, they, they're not picky at all. And it can even be a little amount like these. I just transplanted them here, but they were this size in this much dirt. I can actually go find one that I still have. 
because like I said, this is probably my favorite plant to plant, so I always have more of them. You can see here, here's some little ones, right? And they, they'll keep growing. Like, if I leave them in this bag, it'll get, like, three feet tall and be fine. Won't have any issues. Um, and then if we go over here, this is what one looks like when it just started. And they're, they're beautiful. I'll, I'll show a photo on the screen right now. This is what the Malinche looks like when it grows up. It has these really beautiful orange-red flowers. And what's even cooler about them is they are actually a fertilizing plant. So this is a permaculture plant. And you know that it's one of those plants because of a few characteristics. One, it's the leaf pattern. This is an array of leaves. You see that? The second pattern is that there's thorns. When there's thorns on a plant, it's more likely that it is one of those fertilizer plants. Or the third trait of a fertilizing plant is legumus. So it's basically, it's seeds or beans. So if you see bean pods in a tree, and if you have all three of these qualities, you have the array of leaves, you have the spiky stem, and you have the bean pods when it's mature, that's how it makes its seeds, that's a plant that fertilizes the soil and makes other plants do well. And you can even tell just in how they grow because this plant, as I mentioned earlier, it can grow in just a little container and it can get quite big. Whereas other plants, if you keep them in a little container, they'll really start to suffer and they won't do as well. Now, the next plant is not actually common in Nicaragua, but it grows really well here. And this is the vanilla orchid. So I didn't know until recently, but vanilla, the vanilla bean, is actually an orchid. And this is what it looks like. What's interesting about vanilla is it hates the dirt. So if you plant it in the dirt, it's going to die. What it grows in is basically like decaying wood, tree bark, and leaves. That's what it likes. And it'll actually attach itself. It's hard to see them, but there's one right there and one right there. It puts out those roots and then grows into a tree. And this literally grows up the tree. So this is a plant that grows on a tree trunk and it doesn't grow out of the ground. It's very, very, very special. And I don't know why they're rare here in Nicaragua because they grow really well. Like, and they're like native to Mexico and really similar climates. So again, I don't know why vanilla is not more common here because it grows really well. Uh, it was actually hard to find. I got really lucky and the guy I buy plants from just happened to know somebody who had three tiny little vanilla plants. So I've been working on them. Unfortunately, they take a really long time to grow. Like this might produce vanilla in six years. <laughs> and here we have a companion planting experiment. As I mentioned, these Malinche, as far as I know, they are fertilizing plants. So, theoretically, you should be able to use them in a permaculture approach to fertilize the soil and help the plants nearby. So, with that in mind, I am trying an experiment and pairing it with black pepper. Black pepper is another foreign plant. I think it's normally from Vietnam, but it grows really, really well here in Nicaragua. It takes a while, but it pretty much grows anywhere. This is, I actually have a couple black peppers, so that one is an experiment. Same with this over here. This one's sick because I just transplanted it, but you see it's making new leaves. So this is new. And these were all a gift from a neighbor, basically, who has this really, really old black pepper plant. And uh, I basically have one in the ground over here. It looks really small, but that's just because this actually used to be quite big and then I made a bunch of cuttings out of it. So this was the one plant, and now there's four other plants. And that's something that's really cool about black pepper, is that, yeah, it grows slow, but you can clone it and cut it up, basically, after you root it, and then you can turn one plant into four, or one plant into, like, eight. And as long as you basically let it grow roots, you can just let the roots grow here and then cut that part off and it'll just make more. So it's a really fun plant because you can keep propagating more and more and more of it. And it has some potential for profit, but 
Uh, not that much, really. Uh, the most profitable one by far is vanilla. And here we have cacao, which honestly, out of everything I've shown you, is probably the easiest to grow. You know, I'd heard foreigners before say, ah, you know, in Nicaragua, you can just throw anything in the ground and it'll grow. And like, that's sort of true. It might start growing, but then it's going to get eaten by leafcutter ants or chickens or stepped on by somebody or drowned in the rain. It's very misleading to think that, oh, just anything you put in the ground will grow. Especially if you come here with a Western approach, it's going to be the opposite. Everything you put in the ground is just going to die, especially if you just plant things the way the West does. But that being said, cacao, wow, these plants, they, they just grow, honestly. I bought five cacao, really cheap. They arrived sketchily delivered. All of the uh, soil was separated from the roots. They were really beat up. There was all this crap all over the leaves. They just had two or three leaves. One of them lost all the leaves. I planted one there, one there, one over here even. This is a cacao, believe it or not. This struggling little thing that somehow survived. And then also these cacao over here. And as I mentioned, I got them and they were all basically dead. And I just put them in the ground and they all just... Psh, like, not a single one of them died. So cacao is, oof, it gets it. And these, you can see, they're healthier, right? Like, this one's probably the most healthy. You see it's got a lot of leaves. Whereas if you look at this one, this is the least healthy. And the, obviously that makes sense. I mean, it's growing underneath something. Also, it was totally effed. It lost every single one of its leaves. So that put it really far behind. But even then it still somehow managed <laughs> to make new leaves, even though it was just this pitiful stick in a dark spot. <laughs> like, so cacao is a really easy plant to grow here. It definitely grows quite well. And another plant that grows really, really well is coconut. This is a coconut tree. However, they won't all grow that well. You can see this apparently, by chance, I found the perfect spot for a coconut because you can see it gets the right amount of sun but it's not getting too much sun. Um, it's actually sort of on the corner underneath a mango tree. So it gets sunlight but not all day and that seems to be exactly what it likes because I also planted another coconut at the same time but you can see that this coconut it's it's just not not that happy, you know? <laughs> and that makes sense, really, because it's in a darker area. There isn't as much sun. So this, uh, this coconut here has been suffering. But that one, whew, that one does really well. And here is one of my other favorite plants to grow. This is Kalala, or passion fruit. There's actually three different passion fruits here. They grow like this, they grow kind of slowly, and then suddenly, boom, they start getting tall. Like you see how this one has got these big leaves. This one's ready to put in the ground and it's about to shoot up. And they basically make these long ass vines. Two years ago, I planted a bunch of these. And this vine is the same as this. So you put this in the ground, boom, and it grows and grows and grows and grows and grows and grows and grows, grows and grows and grows and grows, and then it takes over the whole mango tree. <laughs> so we have a bunch of passion fruit, and it's a really, really cool plant to grow. If you're trying to get passion fruits, um, there's one thing to keep in mind, a lesson I didn't learn. What's really common here is yellow passion fruit, and yellow passion fruit is self-sterile, so you need to have two different kinds of yellow passion fruit vines to pollinate each other properly. Otherwise, you'll not really get that many fruits. Um, so that's why if we look over here, because these were all planted from the same fruit, which reduces the chance of the flower, <laughs> that reduces the chance of the flower becoming a fruit. You wanna do that again for the camera? Yeah? Show them who's boss. Show them who's the big rooster.
<laughs> and the passion fruits grow up the tree and then they go <laughs> they grow to the top of the tree and then after like two years or so you'll start getting fruit and what's funny about passion fruit is you never know it's there it's just up there and then one day it falls down and that's when you know that it's there but because it literally grows in the very, very tops of the trees, uh, it's really hard to tell that the fruit is actually there. So I planted those, they grew up in the tree, and then I kind of forgot about them. But another great benefit of passion fruit, especially when you grow it up a tree, is it drops a lot of these leaves. And animals go nuts for passion fruit leaves. I, I had no idea, to be honest, but watch. You see this chicken right here? That's specks. Look what she does. You like that, huh? Yeah, it's very good. Oh, and who's that? Oh, and Maggie here too? Maggie wants some? Chickens love leaves that are sort of crunchy, that they can get their beak around, but they struggle to eat them. I'm making it a lot easier because I'm holding the leaf in place so she can eat it really quickly. But normally they're just on the ground, and the chicken, like, it picks it up, but it's hard for it to actually get a, a proper grip. But you could probably feed animals if you had enough of these because they, they literally love them. They go nuts. See, even Maggie, she just escaped just so that she could take the passion fruit leaf. And whenever it falls, you'll just be walking around the garden. The chickens all run over there and try and get it. It's very cute. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching one of my plant videos. They're really fun to make, and honestly, I didn't start planting until two or three years ago, and it's really a blast, especially living in the tropics. It's so incredibly fun, and being able to be around chickens and have a compost pile and study permaculture, Nicaragua is an amazing place for that. So if you're interested in any of this, or you want to learn more about plants or living in Nicaragua, then you can book a consultation with me. You won't be interrupted by a little rooster during the consultation, I promise. And it's only $20 per 30 minute session. So it's a great way for you to kind of ease some of your anxieties. If you're coming to the country and you feel a bit nervous, you want to talk to someone who is living there and has been living there for a while. Or if you're interested in gardening and planting and you want to learn more about the kinds of plants that grow well here, then I'm able to help you with that. I'm not a farmer. I haven't been doing this for decades, but I can tell you kind of what does well and what doesn't do, and what doesn't do well. So hopefully that'll work out. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.